Hello everyone and welcome to the QC Colab Introduction to C, C++ and Microcontroller Programming class. In this four to five week course we're going to introduce you to the basics of programming microcontrollers in the C, C++ language here at the Colab. Hopefully we'll have a great time. Why uh, C, C++ you may ask? Well, C and, and C++, uh, I consider them the same language really. C is uh, the language as it was first created and, and C++ as some extensions that were added on to it later. Uh, C++ and C basically are the most popular language in the world today. Everything that is serious business is is written in C, C++. The uh, Windows operating system was written in C. The Linux operating system is written in C. The Mac OS operating system is written in C. Every operating system I'm aware of is, is all written in C. Even most of the software that runs on the operating systems are written in C. Like, I can guarantee you that Chrome was written in C, and so is, uh, you know, Internet Explorer. It's all written in C. Everything that is serious is written in C. Uh, what about uh, Java, you may ask? Well, Java is a very popular language. It's the second most popular language in the world. Uh, you write your Java language, and your Java language executes in a Java engine that was written in C. So... Everything goes back to C. You're using C whenever you do anything with a computer uh, one way or another. Either you're interacting directly with a C or you're interacting with a program that was created using C. So uh, why did we select the Arduino? Well, the Arduino is a great microcontroller platform. It's not actually the microcontroller itself. The microcontroller itself is made by a company called... Uh, Atmel. Uh, the uh, microcontroller in particular is called the AT Mega 328 on the board that we're looking at here, the Arduino Uno. Uh, the uh, microcontroller was made by this company called Atmel. It's designed to be programmed in, in C, C++ uh, using a uh, tool chain based on GCC, which is a set of C, C++ compilers. If you are a professional and you're going to use this microcontroller, you would buy a box of these microcontrollers and you would design your own board and you would uh, pick out your crystals and, and set up your oscillators and, and you'd have the boards professionally manufactured and then you would set up your own tool chain using the GCC stuff and uh, you know make files and, and a bunch of uh, technology that professionals use every day. But in order to uh, reduce the learning curve, Arduino has done everything for you that they could while still giving you basically the maximum uh, of flexibility. So this board here is uh, what in the industry we call a prototyping board. It's got your microcontroller on it. It's got everything you need to ask, uh, access all the inputs and outputs on that microcontroller. And uh, the Arduino team has gone even further by making a nice uh, GUI that uh, makes it real easy for a beginning programmer to start programming without having to learn anything about topics like make files and such so we can jump right into it and we can make code actually happen today in an hour instead of taking you know a week <laughs> a week of training to understand the basics first so let's talk a little bit about this uh, Arduino platform this is the Uno as I said this is their latest platform I myself don't own one of these I use a Dweme Love a Dweme Lenova maybe um, it's uh, Italian so I'm pretty terrible at it. But uh, so if you have an older one, it doesn't matter. You can see that we've got a bunch of digital I.O. ports up here. All right, you know, 0 through 13. Uh, 0 and 1 are connected to the USB chip, so you generally won't want to use those, but you can under some circumstances. 13 is connected to this LED. We also have some analog input ports here. These can measure voltages. And the digital ports, of course, either produce voltages or, or connect a pin to ground. Reset button here. Uh, this header is for a uh, different style of program we won't be using, so you can ask me about that later if you want. Uh, this, of course, is the USB port. The USB port uh, used it plug into your computer. The chip can, uh, see, I guess I should say the board can be powered by USB or it can be powered by an external power supply. This is the Arduino website, arduino.cc. Uh, we will be using this to uh, download the software. Here you'll see a download link. And you can pick Windows, Mac OS X, or Linux copies of the software or the source code. Uh, the software is written in Java, I believe, and it is uh, it runs on everything. So you can pick any uh, platform you want there. And uh, go ahead and, and proceed to download the software so that we can install it. We are going to be following the Getting Started Guide today. And I'm going to select Getting Started for Windows because I'm on the Windows platform. And uh, 
you know, we're just going to start going through this uh, uh, section by section until we get uh, code running. Okay, what you're going to need is is the Arduino itself and uh, this uh, USB cable. This is just a standard USB cable. Uh, hopefully you have one. If not, we have a couple laying around at the Colab. Uh, you're going to have to download the uh, software that we mentioned before and go ahead and get the Arduino connected to your PC. Alright, so once you've got your Arduino connected up, you need to find uh, the software that you downloaded. And uh, if you're in class today, you don't actually have to download the software. I've already downloaded it for you. And it's in our C++ class uh, Arduino software folder in our, in our Dropbox. You just need to uh, pop that open and unzip it somewhere. There's no in software. Uh, there's no installer associated with the software. So you're just going to put it someplace and, and you're going to run it. Here inside the uh, Arduino folder that we created, you'll see, by the way, this is version 22 of the software. It's just an Arduino XE. You just go ahead and run it. And here's your Arduino IDE. Now we have to install the drivers for the Arduino. Uh, what we're actually installing drivers for is for the uh, USB chip that's our, the Arduino. The USB chip is a serial to USB chip. Basically the Arduino pretends to be a device attached to the serial port. So we're going to install this driver that lets the computer detect the Arduino being plugged into USB as a serial port so we can communicate it with serial communications. To install the drivers, you're going to follow the instructions in Section 4 of the Getting Started Guide. Uh, the driver installation procedure is different for different versions of Windows, different for different versions of the chipset. Uh, most of the time these instructions work great, but every once in a while they don't. I can tell you that my Duema Lenovo uh, did not install under Windows 7 64-bit, and I had to manually install the drivers from ftdichip.com website which is who made the uh, FTDI chips the uh, that's the chips that connect the USB to the serial stuff uh, so uh, if you uh, have any trouble you know try to figure it out talk to your friends uh, fortunately Windows drivers can often be an adventure so good luck after you get the drivers for your Arduino installed we're gonna go ahead and launch our Arduino software And take a look here at uh, the tools menu. Under the tools menu you have the option to pick your COM port. Hopefully you only have one COM port show up. If you have multiples you may have to try different ones. Uh, it is possible your computer has the COM port built in, though it's not very common today. Uh, it could be any number. Mine happens to be COM3, so I'm going to select that. Then here under board I have to pick my board. Now I've got an Arduino Duemela, Duemela Nova. Uh, you might have an Uno. Um, probably have an UNO if you're attending the class unless you already had your board, so make sure you select the appropriate board there. Alright, as our uh, final step today, we're going to go ahead and upload an example to the board. So go ahead and go File and Examples. If you look in here, you'll find an examples on doing a lot of things with the Arduino, and we'll definitely be going through some of these in the future. We're going to pick up Blank today. It's going to open up a new window. I take a look in this window. Um, it's a very simple program that is going to make uh, your uh, LED on pin 13 blink on and off. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that uh, pin 13 has an LED built right to the board to attack attached to it, so we're going to make this blink. Let's see the program. All right. Uh, in any Arduino program, there's there's two main functions. A function call is just a set of instructions that have a name. In this case, uh, there's a function called setup, and there's a function called loop. Setup gets one gets run once as soon as the chip boots, and in this case, it's setting up the mode on pin 13 to be output. This tells the Arduino that we're going to uh, transmit data on this pin and not receive it. All right, and then then here is the loop. The loop is just run over and over again. Uh, right after the setup finishes, a uh, loop is run, and then when loop finishes, loop is run again. And this continues until the board is rebooted. You can see what we're doing is we're sending a digital write on pin 13 to high. We're setting it high. That means that it's going to be on or, or connected to voltage. Uh, when the pin is high, it's going to produce electricity. And uh, then we're going to select a delay of uh, 1,000, which means uh, wait for one second. Uh, the delay is in milliseconds, of course. 
then uh, we're going to turn the pin low, which is going to no longer be transmitting electricity, so then uh, the LED will go off, and we're going to wait a second again. So we're going to turn the light on, wait a second, turn the light off, wait a second, then it will be called again, and we'll turn the light on, wait a second, turn the light off, and, and wait a second. Now, we could upload this program as is, and uh, I would totally encourage you to do so if you would like. But uh, if you're a purist like me or a traditionalist, uh, you know that uh, all uh, all the first C++ program you should ever write on any platform should always be Hello World, so it always has to say Hello World. So we're going to have to make a couple modifications. So what we're going to do is go ahead and open up another example the analog or digital read serial examples uh, continuously read a value and uh, output it to the serial port. So we're going to copy and paste some code out of this example into our code. Uh, the serial begin function. Uh, serial is an object and we're going to call the function begin inside of it and this initializes the serial engine and we're going to tell it that we want it to run at 9600 baud. 9600 baud is uh, the default uh, speed that the computer is running at and you need the computer and the microcontroller to match in order to successfully transmit data. And then uh, we're going to grab another command here. This tells the serial object to print some data out the serial port. We're going to use a slightly different format. We're just going to tell it to print hello world exclamation mark. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, upload the program to our chip. We've got a couple buttons up here. This is the upload button. This upload button will transmit the uh, program up to the Arduino. First it compiles it, does a lot of stuff in the background, so it takes a couple seconds. And we'll get more into what that stuff in the background is later, but right now it's not important. So go ahead and hit that button. And as soon as uh, you press that button, you'll see the TX and RX light should start flashing like crazy, and that's it transmitting the program up. And then after that, you'll see a nice, uh, gentle flashing of your pen 13 LED. If you want to see it say, hello world, you click your serial monitor button and uh, you'll see it say hello world. Uh, when you open up your serial monitor the uh, IDE reboots the Arduino. So even though we only say hello world at the beginning of the program, I opened up the serial monitor and rebooted the Arduino so it started back at the beginning of the program. And uh, that's it for today's class and I hope you all had a great time and we'll continue to experiment more with the Arduino next week.